Hi guys and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. If you're new around here, I'm Amy and let me tell you a little bit about the collective and its aims. The Animal Artists Collective was founded by Jennifer Charlie of Jennifer Charlie Art and Denise Soden of In The Quick Colour as a platform for emerging artists to promote positive messages of animal welfare and conservation and to connect artists to their communities. The original artwork produced for the Animal Artists Collective is always made available for sale and at least 50% of the proceeds are donated to a non-profit animal conservation organisation. Every other month we create pieces of art based around a theme voted for by you guys. If you want to have your say on next round's theme, you can now vote on our Facebook page with the link in the description below. Unofficial participation is absolutely welcomed in the form of art and or videos and if you do decide to partake, make sure you tag us on your social media outlet of choice. All the links and everything can be found in the description. This round's theme was the polls and I was so super excited about this one as it ties in so well with the upcoming festive period and the fact that the cold weather is imminent here in the UK. I knew exactly what I wanted to draw for this round and as you can probably tell from the emerging artwork, I picked the polar bear. One of my absolute favourite animals and one which I haven't drawn yet. So yay, I got my polar bear pick and ugh, did I have big ambitions for this piece. What's also fantastic about my pick? It just so happens to fall on polar bear week. I don't think this could have gone any better for me this time around. Before we dive into the explanation of this artwork, I want to share, as I always do, some facts about my chosen animal and the charity that I will be donating to. The charity I've chosen this time round is Polar Bears International. This conservation charity is dedicated to securing a future for these adorable creatures and the sea ice which they call home. Their aim is to inspire people to care about the Arctic and to bring knowledge to the threats that both the polar bear and its habitat face. I've had so much fun this past week browsing their website as they have live bear cams where you can catch a glimpse of this magnificent creature and explore their habitat from the comfort of your own home. I've been mesmerised just watching the snowy tundra hoping to spot a polar bear. No luck for me just yet but I'm gonna keep on watching. So let's get into those facts. The first fact I have for you is that polar bears are the largest and one of the most mobile predators on four legs. They can roam more than 3,000 kilometers per month and can have home ranges in excess of, get this, 600,000 square kilometers. Now I don't know what this is in miles, I probably should have done the conversion, but that is a heck of a lot of space. The average male bear can weigh anything between 300 to 600 kilograms, with females weighing between 100 and 290 kilograms. And those little tiny baby bears, they start life at just one to two pounds, and within a few months can weigh almost 20 times that weight. And that's because polar bear milk is one of the fattiest milks at just over 30% fat, which is what helps keep those cubs growing at that rapid rate. Now this is a bit of a weird fact and polar bears have sticky feet. This is a fact I really wasn't aware of but it sounds so peculiar as it is just saying that. Their paws measure almost 12 inches in diameter and they have little tiny tufts between their toes and pads to keep them warm. Their pads are covered in tiny soft bumps called papillae. I'm really not sure if I'm saying that right. I was going to Google pronounce it, but I completely forgot, so I'm going with that pronunciation. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But those little soft, tiny bumps, they help the polar bear grip the ice and keep the bear from slipping. And that's a pretty handy thing to have. That's evolution right there, peoples. The bears are insane swimmers. They can swim for hours on end, covering a huge distance at a rate of about six miles per hour, but they can't outswim a seal, which is why they rely on the sea ice so much, as it gives them a platform to rest and to hunt. And their huge paws are specifically adapted for swimming, and they use their little back legs, or 
quite large back legs really, like a rudder. Polar bears navigate with their noses and they can smell a seal from more than one kilometer away and up to one meter under the snow. That is pretty insane. And they move crosswind to pick up as many new scents as possible to find one which satisfies their interest, be that a seal or a female, if it's a male bear, absolutely anything. I remember watching something about this, I think it was maybe Frozen Planet, the uh, David Attenborough series, and I found this so interesting. They can also smell other polar bears' footprints and stuff, it was so, in so interesting, you should watch it, it's actually on Netflix at the moment. Here's a fact I'd heard before, but perhaps you guys haven't. Polar bears are actually black and not white. I know! Their fur is actually translucent and is only seen as white because it reflects light and its surroundings. Hello, whole lot of ice and snow, kind of makes sense. So yeah, their skin is actually black. Pretty interesting fact right there. This next one is a little bit scary. There's a total population of approximately 26,000 wild bears and their population is actually divided into 19 units and of those 19 units just one unit has a population that is increasing and four of those 19 units are actually in massive decline. Polar bears need sea ice to hunt, travel, find mates, raise their cubs and that sea ice is rapidly declining. The melting season is much longer than it used to be, which means that sea ice actually forms later and is breaking up earlier in the year. This in turn restricts the polar bear's feeding range. As a result, polar bears are predicted to decline by 30% by 2050. Climate change is the greatest threat to the bears, but not the only one which threatens them. Habitat destruction and risk of exposure to toxic chemicals through prey from invading gas and oil companies brings another danger to this gracious creature. I'm also going to mention the WWF here as they are also putting a huge effort into conservation for these animals and protecting them as much as possible. Now you have a few facts behind your belt, let me talk to you about my artwork and the intentions behind this piece. The reason I was so excited for this particular subject was because I had plans to create a piece with a few different elements to what I usually do. I really wanted to attempt some kind of background or at least a larger area of habitat. I usually shy away from anything as vast as what I've attempted with this piece, usually having just like a head study or a small hint or something like a log or a twig or something that my subject of choice is sitting or perched upon. So that was my first challenge with this piece. My second challenge to myself was that I wanted to break out of doing head studies and focus on the whole animal. Eeh, this is scary. This is so scary. I had an abundance of choice of reference photos for this and the one that I chose really caught my eye because it encapsulated both of my concepts above and it really took my attention. So I hear you ask, Amy, why did, I, why did you want to break from your norm? Well, I wanted to convey a stronger message with my piece. I didn't want to go with a detailed close up because I don't think it would have conveyed the fragility of these creatures and their habitat. Sure, it would have been great to capture their enormous power and beauty by drawing that detailed head study, but I just really wasn't feeling it for this piece. I think in choosing these options, my finished piece has its own power and strength and symbolises many qualities of the polar bear. Their solidarity lifestyle, their enormous size and gracious features, but it also symbolises how vulnerable as a species they are and brings attention to their habitat. It might just be me that thinks that, but I'm extremely happy with the emotion and thought behind this piece and I'm actually really pleased with the final outcome. And I think I'm going to place it in my top three that I've created this year. Let's talk about process. I know a lot of people are put off by the prospect of white fur, especially when you're drawing on white paper, but for me, this is one of the easiest things to render. I think a common mistake people make is thinking that white fur is just made up of one or two colours, usually being very light greys. But if you look closely at a reference or a real life furry subject, you'll start to see a ton of different colours and tones within there. I add so many colours into my whites that people often think I'm insane, hey, hey, maybe I am, 
who knows? But the end result is so rich and full of life, it's anything but flat and ugly. The main thing I do when working white on white is focus on the shadows and tones I can see on the fur, and I think of those areas as shapes or clumps rather than individual strands of hair or fur. It's a much more manageable subject that way. The polar bear part of this drawing was actually relatively simple. I just followed the fur direction on each part of his body and added in the shadows by gently shading and building up the colours. The tiny little fur details were added in with a super sharp walnut brown pencil and a few strokes of dark sepia too. I've added countless layers of earth green, sky blue, cinnamon, nougat, delft blue, violet, all of those colours and more have gone into this polar bear and combined they create a great effect and add a whole lot more dimension to the bear. Can you imagine if I'd just gone in with a couple of grey tones? It really wouldn't have had the same effect, I don't think. The ice is where things got a little bit trickier. This is a texture I haven't tackled before and to be honest I never thought I would as I often try to avoid subject matters and backgrounds like this as much as I can. Saying that, this is one of the most enjoyable textures I've drawn yet. There's something so satisfying trying to achieve that smooth look and I went at this the same way I would like a frog skin or anything kind of smooth and shiny or slimy. I shaded in many different directions to fill in the teeth of the paper and then I blended and burnished out with the, my white pencil to get everything looking super duper smooth. I then layered up more moving towards those darker pencils and continued the same process until my dark tones were where they needed to be. I used the same technique of identifying the shapes and shadowed areas and I added those in first and then blended and built up the surrounding areas. The time went so quickly when rendering the ice that I was actually kind of sad when it came to an end which really surprised me. All in all I am absolutely in love with this piece and it's not often that that actually happens. I'm so thrilled with the final outcome and I would really love to know what your thoughts are so please make sure that you pop them in the comments below for me. If you want to watch the full process and tutorial and draw along with me in real time then that is now available to my patron and website subscribers. If you fancy checking either of those channels out I've left the links in the description for you. Make sure you go and check out what the other members of the collective have created for this round. There's some fantastic animal picks for this round so go and make sure you show your support and love for the collective and the other artists involved and the animals that they've chosen as well. The links as always for all members including our guests for this round are in the description for you. Thank you so much for watching this video, I love creating these pieces and being a part of the Animal Artist Collective and imparting a little bit of creature info to you guys. I always get a great response from this community when these videos come out and I cannot thank you enough for the love that you actually do give out. It's so incredible and your support means the whole world. If you're new around here and you love this video and you want to see more wildlife art with coloured pencils then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and tick that bell icon so that you never miss a video. I post new videos every single Friday and I live stream most Sundays too which is always a hoot and I would love to have you be a part of the growing community here on this channel. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!